Hi friends. So I wanted to talk about why prayer is so powerful. Um, why do it, you know? And what happens as a result of, of praying? So basically, I personally believe, um, as a, a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, that in likeness to his example to us, that praying is literally the most powerful thing anyone can do. While it seems to have no results a lot of the time, if you are walking with God and you are um, obedient and you are doing things that please him, like, I don't know, helping the poor and afflicted and widows and orphans and um, just being generally charitable and, and loving and whatever, and also doing works of the kingdom like deliverance and other um, kingdom works, like maybe you're a teacher or a preacher or maybe you're an evangelist, whatever it is. If you're walking right with the Lord and he has, uh, I suppose he's blessing the work of your hands, uh, that you're doing for him by kind of um, uh, condoning you, your prayers are very effective. Um, and the key text here is obviously James uh, chapter 5, 13, 14, um, and 15 and 16 as well. It's actually verse 16. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. That should be very encouraging to us. Um, it avails because God condones your... Because your will is in line with his, he can manifest works of his kingdom through you and so prayer is powerful not because not that god needs our prayers but through faith which is how god has chosen to work through his people through faith prayer is manifesting his his will and his action in the world and it's so powerful because our petition to him can literally change nations change situations change people um, change ourselves um, it's literally life changing stuff uh, not just on a personal basis but for the entire world even and maybe you know, one of the reasons why Satan seems to have such a stronghold in these last days is that Christians just don't pray enough. Maybe they don't pray nearly as much as they used to. You know, maybe I certainly know that people in other countries, not in Western countries, put us to shame for the amount that they pray and, and they sacrifice in that way with praise and all sorts of things. Um, and it's become a Western um, habit, I suppose, to do anything else other than prayer. Anything. Doesn't matter. You could go to a prayer meeting and people will talk for half of it rather than pray. It's literally like that. And uh, if we actually fully understood the kind of depth of power that is in our hands simply because we can... I suppose, talk to and then come in agreement with the Father of Lights, our Heavenly Father, um, we would see his power released into all sorts of situations uh, and we would be encouraged with answers to our prayers. But as with anything, you need to practice prayer in order to be good at it, yeah? And, and have that kind of relationship with the Father uh, to be able to um, 
see his works done through your petitions and, and actions. Um, but he does say the earnest, faithful prayer of a, of a righteous man, someone he considers who is walking with him and knows him well, will actually have great power because he will listen to that person. And that that should either cause you to, like, you know, be a little bit worried that things aren't happening in your life for whatever reason. Maybe you're in active sin and, or, and you know, no one else knows it but you and the Father. Maybe that's maybe that's a reason your prayers don't get answered maybe there's other reasons who knows but he does promise that whatever you ask for in his name if it's in his will he'll do it so you know i, I can i'm talking to myself as well why why do i not see this kind of thing and you can be sure that it's my fault or or your fault it's not god's fault right so that that things don't happen He's, he's waiting for us to act in faith. Um, and earlier on in James, you know, is any, anyone feeling afflicted? Let him pray. Is anyone happy? Is anyone merry? Let him sing psalms, sing, sing praises, you know. Is anyone sick among you? Let the elders of the church pray for them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. Acts of faith, you know. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if you've even forgiven, if, if you've even committed sins, you can be forgiven of them with prayer, right? With, with earnest, righteous humility coming before the throne. And it, it goes on to talk about humility, really, in verse 16. Confess your faults to one another. Pray for another, one another that you may be healed. Yeah. So, I mean, that's why prayer is powerful. We can literally, us, little hobbits, you know, that kind of goof around on the earth, you know, making each other laugh and, and, and trying to please each other, you know, and do, doing what we do as hobbits, you know. We, we can literally move the hand of the creator of the universe just from having a good relationship with him and praying about things that we know he's going to agree with for them to change now you can be sure that god does not want satanists for example to have the kind of stronghold that they have in the west at the moment but are we are we really praying about that? What about Islam? You know, does God really want Islam to have the stranglehold that it does in the Middle East and beyond? You can bet that he doesn't. But yet, followers of the, both those religions, Satanism and, and Islam, are far more committed to and and devoted to prayer to their demon gods than we are to our God who deserves all of our attention and, um, you know, and, and devotion. So it puts us to shame, really. And I'm glad to say that it's not worldwide. There are so many people in places that we might consider in the West to be backward or, you know, third world or whatever. But those people, you know, elsewhere in the Bible, I think it's still in James, it says... Um, God has chosen the poor to have faith, to be rich in faith. And the, and the rich are humbled because, you know, they're, 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 they lack that kind of spirituality that the poor have because they live day to day and they're completely trusting in and relying on God. So, you know, it's so easy to think that we have it all. I, I was just outside just now thanking the Lord for everything that he's given me, he's given me, you know, a lovely van, a, a warm, cozy room to come home to after, you know, giving me all this work to earn some money and um, work hard and do something with my day. 
and uh, you know he's given me great friends and a uh, good family and a lovely place to live and but that's not the be all and end all you know it's about spiritual truth it's about spirituality really and we all have things that we need to deal with but uh, that lead us deeper into holiness and I'm no exception to that so um, but you know going elsewhere in the world has shown me that we don't take advantage of the power there is in prayer and I, I, I often lament that there's no you know there's lots of churches around here but there's no prayer meetings not on not on days or times where I can make them anyway um, you know you get the odd prayer meeting at 10 o'clock in the morning where a bunch of retired people get together I live in the country but there are people who understand the power of prayer and they're the old faithful kind of propping up those um, musty old kind of um, seemingly dead prayer meetings you know with just a couple of little old grannies and a granddad kind of like faithfully praying um, where are all the you know fervently devoted um, young full of life and zest Christians who uh, who you know have a have a mandate to change things and there was a movement called the boiler room um, where there was 24-hour prayer going across Britain I haven't heard about that for a while you know um, there's just I do believe that it's spiritual strongholds on our nation in Britain and also the United States where Satan has uh, legions of, of demons called unbelief and um, you know making us too busy to do this kind of thing or too lazy perhaps to do this kind of thing but if we knew the power of prayer I think things would change and I'm here to encourage you that not only do we want to talk to our Heavenly Father in devotion and speak to him in private in our own chambers but we need to congregate and get together uh, where two or three are gathered there I am in the midst said Jesus right and um, it's very powerful it's world changing stuff if you want to make a difference in the world then prayer is the way to go um, obviously prayer actions have to follow prayer as well if, the, if that's what it needs um, but nevertheless when we pray to the, the Lord and we are right with him and we're walking as he wants you're going to see results and don't believe anything else that people or the devil will tell you prayer changes things it's very powerful and we can see great liberation and change for the better if we start doing it properly so be encouraged and praise the lord <laughs>